We are dinosaur nerds, but we also specialize in marine fossils, like the Zephactinus you saw on river monsters. Today I'm talking to my boss, Mike Trebold, who's been digging up these real-life monsters for decades. This is Zephactinus, also pronounced Zyphactinus. Technically, it is the name for a giant carnivorous fish from the Western Interior Seaway, about 82 million years old, that was the largest piscine predator of its day and probably of all time. This is the way they've been displayed for the last 100 plus years. In a wall mount, in artificial matrix, and in most museums, high on the wall. Well, about 25 years ago, I got to thinking, you know, that is such a massive, vicious looking animal stuck flat in the rock on the wall. What would it look like if it was seen three dimensionally the way they were in life? And I thought that would really be neat, but I didn't know how in the world am I going to do that? How, how could that be done? And I realized that about the only way it could properly be done was to find a skeleton that was complete but had rotted, the bones had come apart, and it was disarticulated before finally being buried. So my search began, and eventually I found one. This is the three-dimensional Zyphact in this cast. This is what it looked like approximately in skeleton form back when it was alive. And the way that we accomplished that was by taking the disarticulated skeleton and removing every single bone from the matrix molding every single bone individually and then reassembling it as it was in life. And it makes it especially difficult with fish because a lot of the bones don't actually touch each other. They just sort of float next to one another and it's, it's quite a challenge. One of the things in particular are the, the uh, operculum, the gill covers. They're like an eighth of an inch thick and about a foot square. And when you're trying to mold and cast something that thin and that delicate, you have to know what you're doing or you will ruin the, the original part. We didn't, everything is fine, but it's because we have a lot of experience doing this. A lot of people wonder what the name Zyphactinus means, and what it means is sword ray. It was given to a pectoral fin ray, a single ray that was discovered back, I think, in the 1870s. And no one knew exactly what kind of fish that went with, so it just kind of got shoved off to the side. A full skeleton of this particular fish was found later, and they named it Portheus. So these were known as Portheus for several decades, before eventually someone realized it had all be, already been named Zyphactinus years earlier, which of course then placed Portheus as the junior synonym and the real name is Zyphactinus. Once we achieved the 12 and a half foot Zyphactinus in 3D as a cast, we did the, four, the 17 foot one. And after doing both of those, we realized that if we were just very, very, very precise, we could do the same thing with progressively smaller and smaller and smaller fish from the same fauna, from the same environment. And so eventually we did Ichthyodectes, which is a relative of this, and Sauridon, and then we went to Encodus, which is only about five feet long, as is Simulictus, and we're gonna be doing others. These fish are very interesting as 3D casts because you can see all of the unique armament that they had, such as, you know, three and a half inch fangs on the Zephactinus. The Sauridon has a predentary bone that sticks out beyond the lower jaw. The uh, Simulictus has multiple rows of sharp teeth in the mouth. Those are all very interesting, unique characters to these fish that, that uh, really, really are most interesting when seen in 3D form, as opposed to on a flat panel mount presentation. <laughs> 